Hey guys, Kaz here and today I'm going to be doing a massive unhaul of some books. So, I've actually had these in a bag for a little while but I thought I should probably get this done, get this filmed and get them out of my house. I went around my shelves, I picked up some things, honestly like, I would say 9 out of 10 but let's say more like 30 out of 32, I don't know how many there are on here. Basically the vast majority is what I'm trying to get out. I have read and enjoyed but I've just, I've, I'm not going to read it again or I've got some chunky books on here. I don't like hardbacks so I'm getting rid of some of them even though I enjoyed them. But yeah, without any further waffling let's just jump straight in. So first up I have Love Drugged by James Cleiss or Cleese. This is a book I read several many years ago. It was alright. I don't see me rereading it. It wasn't even that good to be honest. So yes, it is going. It was about a, a kid who's gay and then there's a pill like his friend has a dad who makes a pill that makes you not gay or something mad like that anyway. It was alright. Bye bye. Next up I have May the Best Man Win by Zer Elor. Read this last year, really enjoyed it. Actually thought it was a really good book but probably not going to reread it. It's quite big. So give it to somebody else who's going to also enjoy it. Here to Stay by Sarah Farazan. Sarah Farazan I think. And I read this a few years ago. Again, enjoyed it. Sports Contemporary. Not going to read it again. Next up I have the Trilogy of the Maze Runner. I know there's more books after that but I didn't read them ones. So I have The Maze Runner, I have The Scorch Trials and I have The Death Cure by James Dashner. I am in team, very much enjoyed this series, really liked it. The film was terrible. Well The Maze Runner film was alright but The Scorch Trials film was fucking wank. And I know a lot of people like the film and don't like the books for some reason, but I was the opposite of that. But yeah, it's taken up space and I feel like this is a series that's just so easy to get hold of if I ever did really, really want to read it again. It'll probably just be in the library or something. But yeah, I don't know if I ever will want to read it again, but I did really enjoy this series and the film was really bad. Next I have Concrete Rose and On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. I really enjoyed both of these books. I'm keeping The Hate You Give because I feel like that's got more likely got rereadability for me personally. I really enjoyed both of these as well though. But yeah, just pass them on to somebody else. I'm not going to read them again. I have trouble with books with poems or raps or stuff in because a lot of the time I read it and I just think that's not even good. So that's one problem I had with this. And also a book I read recently. Um, I'll talk about it in my wrap up but anyway it was like there was poetry and I was like but other than that besides that I enjoyed them but yeah not going to read them again so get rid make space for the new books. Next up Aftermath by Kelly Armstrong I read this last year it was all right it wasn't giving me the vibes I wanted though I wanted it to be more like trauma -y, how people deal with stuff afterwards because it's about a school shooting but it was more like a YA thriller of somebody sending notes to the girl whose brother did the shootings and all that jazz like it was all right but yeah. Next up potentially polarizing is As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. I'm keeping the first two books but this book like I did a 15 minute rant in one of my wrap ups about this book it was just so not it for me personally check my rant out if you want to know more but I thought you know what it's quite chunky I don't need the trilogy because you can read the other two as books without this tax on the end so yeah getting rid of it. The Passing Playbook by Isaac Fitzsimmons another sports gay contemporary that I read and enjoyed but I'm passing along. Next I have All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Stiefvater this one is very unfortunate because I really like Maggie Stiefvater most of her other books I absolutely love this one, for some reason, and obviously it was the correct reason, in my mind I just didn't even care to even want to read it for a while. Eventually I picked it up just because I did really enjoy her other books. So I thought, why am I not picking that one up? I'm sure I'll enjoy it as much. And then it was just alright. It just wasn't what I wanted. I didn't enjoy it as much as I would have liked to. So it is going now. And then next up we have The Black Flamingo by Dean Atter. I enjoyed this one, but again... Pass it on. I'm not going to reread it, so it's just sitting there for no reason. Hannibal Rising by Thomas Harris. This one is the fourth book in the Hannibal Lecter series. And as I'd been reading these books, I'd been unhauling them anyway. I found them all in charity shops because they're just very easily readily available to just find there. 
I really enjoyed this series, but I don't need to keep it, so yeah, I've just been unhauling them as I've been reading them. The Magnificent Sons by Justin Myers. I read this last year. I did very much enjoy it, but don't need to open it. All About Romance by Daniel Tolls. This is pretty much exactly the same vein. Read it last year, really enjoyed it. This is also a 2023 release, so it'll be nice to give it into a charity shop and somebody can find it for cheap. And again, the same thing for This Is How You Fall In Love by Annika Hussein. Really enjoyed this book, got sent it by the publisher, did a little, um, what are they called, reel for it. And yeah, pass it on to somebody else that could also enjoy it. Next up is another one that might also be controversial, and that is Simon vs. The Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. When this came out, everybody absolutely loved it. I read it and I thought, it's all right. I feel like at this point in time, I'd read a million gay contemporaries, but a lot of people on booktube and in the world hadn't. So they were like, oh my days, this is amazing. But I'm just like, it's quite average for like a gay contemporary. It's fine. There's nothing special about it. And I've just been keeping hold of it ever since. And like, I don't really need to. Probably not going to reread it. It wasn't one of my favourites, so yes. Is she being controversial whilst also being controversial again after the controversy? Yes, she is. Um, Akatar, A Court of Thorns and Roses, A Court of Wings and Ruin, and A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Mass. This one, I quite enjoyed. I found it a charity shop for a quid. I thought I'll give that a go because people are talking about it. Quite enjoyed it. Uh, that's the wrong way around. This one, the second book, A Court of Mist and Fury, really, really enjoyed it. Thought it was a really great book. The third one, A Court of Wings of Ruin, cop out. What a cop out. What's the point of having this much like fighting and then nobody dying? Um, so yeah, I never carried on. Don't really care about any of the other books in this series. I enjoyed it. I'm glad I read it, but it, it takes up a lot of space on the shelf. And I'm sure somebody else will really enjoy this. Maybe someone will be like, oh, look, the old covers. So yeah. I don't know if we're halfway through, but the rest of them are, I've got a few hardbacks and then a bunch of comics graphic novels. So let's head on over to a message for one of the spawns and then I'll be back with the rest of the things. Hi, look at you. So, some hardbacks. First of all, The Night Screams by Devon McCormack. I read this last year. It was one of the my least enjoyed books of last year. I think I gave it two stars. It wasn't a fan. So, yeah. Next I have Thud by Terry Pratchett. This was my first ever foray into the world of Terry Pratchett and I did very much enjoy it, but two things. Number one, it's hardback. Number two, there's like a thousand million books in the Discworld series. So I don't really need to be collecting them. I don't mind read them, passing them along. They're very much readily available in charity shops, in the library. My dad lent me three books from the Discworld series, so yeah, read it, enjoyed it, passing it on. Next up we have Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. Again, really enjoyed this book. I don't think I'm gonna read the sequel. I don't feel like I need it to be a series. I just, I very much enjoyed this one book, but it's a big hardback and I don't need it in my life. And then we also have The First to Die at the End by Adam Silvera. I read this last year, really enjoyed it. Again, it's a big hardback. I don't need to own a big hardback, so it's going. So now I've got a bunch of comics and graphic novels. It's funny because if you look over here, it probably doesn't even look like it's been touched, but there's been some rejigging about and I've taken quite a lot off to be honest. So I'm going to start with these ones. I have Smile by Raina Tellermeister. This is non-fiction about her and having braces and that. I enjoyed it and I'm sure somebody else will as well. Similar veins to that, we have El Defo by C.C. Bell. This is also a non-fiction about her being deaf and having um, a cochlear implant. And again, somebody else will enjoy this. Next up, I have volume one and two of Lock and Key. So volume one is Welcome to Lovecraft and volume two is Head Games. Specifically, I'm just getting rid of these because I have the whole series in hardback now, so I don't need these um, other ones. It's just having doubles on my shelves for no reason. Really love the series though. I have Invincible Volume 1 Family Matters. I read this. I wasn't a big fan of it. I thought it was all right, but I didn't feel the need to carry it on. I've heard that it's a really good series and it's like completely not what you're expecting. But if a first volume can't grab you, I don't feel like you should have to carry on reading it until it gets good. So I'm not going to. I randomly have Kick-Ass Volume 3 Issue 3 because one time, like several many years ago, I asked my sister to get me Kick-Ass 
3 and she accidentally bought me issue 3 of volume 3 and it's just been sat on my shelves for no reason so I don't need to own this. And then speaking of issues I just have these random comics from World Comic Book Day from a few years ago that I'm getting rid of. I've, I think I've kept two that are one shots but these are all like the first ones of stories so I'm like what's the point of keeping them because I'm not going to carry on the series. And now everything else has sort of got a similar vibe so I've I was about to say recently this is not a recent thing I've known for a long time that I'm very much not a Marvel person I'm not a DC person I'm not a comic booky person in that sense my favorite comic books like my favorite graphic novels are by Image who are also a publisher but I also love Boombox I love Vertigo Titan all that sort of stuff but I really don't really care for Marvel. I've still got some Marvel, don't get me wrong. I've kept some of my Deadpool ones. I've got um, Runaways and Young Avengers, but pretty much everything else I'm like. So that's where this stack comes in. I have the New Avengers volume one and two. These are the only books in this whole unhaul that I've not read. I actually put the first one on my TBR for this month, but then I thought, you know what? I don't care. So I'm not gonna read it and I'm just gonna unhaul both of them because yeah, I'm sure I'll enjoy it. I'll probably give it like three, 3.5 stars, but I'm just not bothered. I'm also not a massive fan of these series that are just going on forever and ever and ever. Like Avengers are just forever, you know what I mean? It's just, give me a start, a middle and an end is what I'm saying. Speaking of Young Avengers and Runaways though, I do have this one. This one is Secret Invasion with the Runaways and Young Avengers. And this one is Civil War with Young Avengers and Runaways. I enjoy them individually, but both of these comics were very much three stars. I feel like they didn't really do much. I didn't really care for the crossover. It's just like they've made a crossover to get people to read it, but it was just meh. So I don't need to keep these ones. I have Civil War. I did enjoy this, but I'm just not going to reread it. Same with Guardians of the Galaxy. I've got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, Cosmic Avengers. I think it's Volume 1. Who the devil knows? It probably goes on forever. Again, I enjoyed it, but it's just not something that I want to just continue reading and read forever. I have Gambit, King of Thieves, random little... I think it's a one-shot? No, this is Volume 3 of uh, Gambit. It was alright, probably. I can't remember. Oh no, tell a lie, I think I've not read this one either. So three out of everything here I've not read. This is X-Men Gifted. This is volume one of Astonishing X-Men. Again, I really like the X-Men in general. I used to watch the cartoon all the time. I like all the films. But it's just going on forever, isn't it? And I'm not really into that sort of comic. I have Longshot Saves the Marvel Universe. This was a one shot, I believe. It's just a dude that's saving the Marvel Universe. And then I have a bunch of Deadpool. So like I said, I have kept some of them. Weirdly enough though, the ones I'm getting rid of are volume 7, 8, 9 and 10. And then just the definitive Deadpool, which is just this chunky one that I have as well. Because it's chunky and it's just a bunch of stuff. But I feel like that just tells you that like this run of Deadpool just went downhill. It was funny originally. Like I genuinely laughed out loud at some of the other volumes. But like obviously 7, 8, 9 and 10 just went downhill. I think I get this one two stars, that one was really bad. But yeah, I thought get rid of the ones that I'm definitely not going to reread. Keep the one that's that's funny. So yeah, there we go. And there we have it. Those are all the things I'm unhauling. I still don't know how many that was because I didn't count them. But it was several. Let me know down below if you've done any unhauls. Just what do you think of any of these books? Like I said, generally speaking, I enjoyed most of them but I just don't need to own them still. Get rid of them, more space for new things, right? So yeah, do the things if you want, comment if you want, like if you want, subscribe if you want, but only if you want. I do have, I think my next video might even be the opposite of this, but also not the opposite of this, because I have a bunch of library books that I want to show you that I've got, so that's possibly gonna be the next video after this. Probably wearing the same clothes, but I wear the same clothes and everything because I love this jumper and I have two of them, so deal with it. It's my brand. It's me and this palm reader jumper, but sometimes a palm reader jumper that's not as dark because it's like a year or two older than this one. 
so yeah stick around for that if you want and uh, i will see you in a few days probably with that video bye